Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report, and I'm Antonio. I just not too long ago finished watching an interview with Nikki Scott and Prince Harry. After the interview, once I've collected myself and um, washed my face and wiped away the tears, I took pen to paper because I wanted somehow, in some little way, to say thank you with a few humble words. I would ask for us to celebrate the extraordinary resilience and strength of individuals who have transformed their grief into a beacon of hope and light for the world. It is with humility and extraordinary honor to get to learn about Nikki Scott's story and to know that there are many others too that are in the face of unimaginable loss have chosen to channel their pain into positive action creating lasting legacies that inspire and uplift us all one such remarkable individual is nikki scott the founder of scotty's little soldiers Nikki's journey began with a heart-wrenching moment that no parent should ever have to endure. The loss of her husband, Corporal Lee Scott, who was killed in Afghanistan while serving with the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment. In the depth of her grief, Nikki faced the daunting task of telling her young son that his father would not be coming home. It was a moment of profound sorrow, but also a turning point that would lead to the creation of something truly extraordinary. Scotty's Little Soldiers was born out of Nikki's desire to support children who, like her own, have lost a parent in the armed forces. What started as a small initiative has grown into a lifeline for countless young people, providing them with the emotional and practical support they need to navigate their grief and find joy in life once more. Nikki's unwavering dedication has turned her personal tragedy into a source of hope and healing for so many. And for that, we are truly grateful. We are also privileged to have the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, who has been a steadfast supporter of Scotty's Little Soldiers and a global ambassador for the charity. Prince Harry's own experiences with loss and his commitment to mental health advocacy have made him a powerful ally in the fight to support bereaved children and young people. His work with various char charitable organizations, including his own Invictus Games, has had a profound impact on the lives of many, demonstrating the power of compassion and service. Prince Harry and Nikki Scott exemplify the incredible potential within each of us to turn our darkest moments into opportunities for growth and positive change. Their stories remind us that while grief is a deeply personal journey, it can also be a catalyst for creating meaningful connections and fostering sense of community. Let us reflect on the extraordinary work that Prince Harry and Nikki Scott are doing. Let us also reflect on the broader significance of their work. In a world that often feels divided and uncertain, the ability to transform pain into purpose is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. 
It is a reminder that even in our most vulnerable times, we have the capacity to bring light to others and to build a better, more compassionate world. To those who have faced loss and chosen to create hope, thank you. We honor you. Your courage and determination inspire us all to look beyond our own struggles and to find ways to support and uplift those around us. Your actions have shown us that from the depth of grief, we can rise stronger, more empathetic, and more committed to making a difference. Let us commit to supporting one another, to recognizing the strength in vulnerability, and to celebrating the incredible impact that can come from turning grief into hope. Together we can create a world where every child, every person has the opportunity to heal, to grow, and to strive. Nikki Scott, thank you. Thank you. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, we thank you. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. And as always, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. And thank you for spending some of your valuable time here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, the weekend is already here. I mean, depending on whenever you are watching or listening to this podcast. Uh, today is Friday, the 28th of June. I honestly do not know where the month of June went. It appeared and it was like abla, abra cadabra, and it, it, it's on its way out. June was like, I don't want to deal with you people. You people have got issues. So I'm just going to step in and step out. See you later. There is July. Deal with July. That's, that's honestly how, how, how I feel. Um, Oh, beef, beef, before, before I forget, happy Pride. Um, I was out earlier today and the streets around the city is just bustling with action and, and stages are going up and all of that. So happy Pride to um, everyone. And uh, I recorded the intro, um, the message sort of that inspired me with the interview that Prince Harry and Nikki did I, listen, I, I went on the website. I had gone on the website before, but I didn't really navigate the, the, um, the Scotty's website. And I actually navigated it this time and started watching some of the videos that are there. Let me just say I got through two and then I couldn't. I was bawling. I was just and I'm already an emotional person, right? Like my, my, my emotions are like right there, right there. And I mean, I watch a commercial. I'm like, that's so cute. But, you know, it, it really hits home um, when 
you, you know, you, you hear these, these kids speak about their parent and, oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> my voice is cracking. Sorry. Okay, maybe I shouldn't talk about this right now. Anyways, um, the website is really easy to na to navigate. Um, please go. I'll have the link in uh, the description and also I'll put it in the um, comment section. I just think that that interview was so beautifully done. I mean, Prince Harry has talents that we are... Con we, we continue to discover, you know, he's, he's such a talented guy. The way he conducted that interview was just so empathetic and, and, and beautifully um, done. I don't know how much editing they, they did on it, but I, I don't know if you, you folks caught up on, he does this thing where he, as an interviewer, he's, he, he kind of allowed for you to be, a, to, to, to get to, the, to a place where the emotions are right there and you get an emotion about it or emotional about it. And then he kind of brings you back. He brings you back to, I don't want you to, I don't want you to break down. You know what I mean? While other interviewers, like like quote unquote professional interviewers, who go out, they 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 the whole big thing is to have the interviewee get emotional and, and cry their hearts out, right? And I mean, some interviewers are quite like, for example, um, Barbara Walters, for example, was quite famous for that. I think, right? Am I wrong? I hope I. Somehow, I think that's the first thing that's coming to my to my mind is Barbara Walters, and then people would say things like "You got me, you got me, you're making me cry now." Um, and there's no, I don't think there, there's anything right or wrong about how an in, in, in interviewer um, handles that. I just think he handled it in his way, in a very skillful way, because it it. He, he kind of he kind of takes you there, allows you to have that that emotional beginning, but then brings you back, calms you down, and then for you to get your message out, right? Without um, the the big emotion taking over. And as I was watching it, I kept, I just kept thinking, he he's really skillful in the way he is actually doing that because. It also allows him to not to not lose it as the interviewer, because you could see he, he, he had that he he's he's right there. He understands the emotion. He knows the emotion. He's lived the emotion, and it would be very easy to 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 just hold each other and start crying. Right. But 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 he and I think also possibly it might be even for his own his 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 own composure to kind of just okay, I'm good I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you back. Right? Um Well the the man has got some mad skills, right? Like it's just just amazing. Now on the on the other side of all of this, um I was interested to, or I'm always interested in any issue or topic that comes up, how does the UK media is going to spin this now? And it's fascinating how they have sp spun it. Because when you're dealing with something like, you know, Scotty's Little Soldiers, they, they can't vilify Nikki or the charity, because that would be insane to do that, right? So the spin that they had, they they then then they, they now have given this whole thing that that they're just pumping out like crazy is, oh, 
that's the Harry we know. That's the, that's the Harry. That's that's the Harry we miss. That's the Harry coming back to us. That's the Harry that. That's the way he's always been when he was, you know, a working royal. That's the Harry that that, you know, before, <clears throat> before. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to say it, but before. <clears throat> Just say it. Before he met the evil biracial witch? What? What? Before what? Say it. You coward. But you see, they don't they don't they don't say that they imply it. But then some of them do come out and say, Well, you know, before he was brainwashed. These people these I, I you know it doesn't matter how long I, I, I do this. It doesn't matter for what length of time I'm, I, I am privileged to sort of have this channel and, and have this communication with all of you. I will always be, and I always want to be, um, not, 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 the word is not surprise. There is another word. I'll, I'll eventually find it in my brain. About how low these people can go. How they can... How, how nasty. How... There's a word in Spanish. It's called podrido. Podrido. That, 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 that. It's so... Hey, folks. Um... Sorry about that. The, there was an issue here with the mic. I didn't realize that it went off. Um, and so the last couple of, I don't know, two minutes or so that I've been talking, like three minutes. Um, sorry for that sound. Um, you weren't able to hear me well. Um, when I edit this, I'll, I'll just give you notice at the beginning so you can maybe put your volume up a little bit to hear what I was saying. Sorry about that. Um, I use the word in Spanish called uh, podrido. Podrido means rotten, right? There is rotten and dirtiness in these people. And I, I, I'm not trying to be here um, accusatorial or, or mean or saying things about people's culture or a country or anything like that. I am again specifically speaking about the people who talk about this particular issue and situation when it's referring to Prince Harry and Meghan and the royal family and that entire ecosystem and environment. There is a nastiness, a rotten, a lack of morals, values, there is a demonic sort of way in which they approach all of this. And they approach it as if they are the, 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 the most um, people with values and morals. And they're the ones who are in the right in their critique and in their delivery of what they're about to say. Right, it's it. There, 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 there is such nastiness, dishonesty on all of it, and I, I'm, I am so amused of these people still have careers and are paid to do this. What is wrong with humanity? What is wrong with humanity? What is wrong with the people who actually observe this stuff, listen to it, and, and, and have no skill to analyze, or maybe they do have the skill to analyze it, but they choose to just accept what is being delivered to them? I, I'm, I'm just, oh, I always am. It doesn't matter. I... I I could be talking about this in, in a year from now, two years from now. And I will probably say the same thing. Because there's always a, 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 a little glimmer of light that I, that, I, that I have to hold. I have to hold it, folks. 
Because if, if I decide to let it go, then my fate in that there is redemption might dissipate. And I don't want it to ever happen because I don't ever want to become a stone angel, right? With, 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 with no heart, with, with no capacity of, of forgiveness or capacity to, to allow space for people to have redemption. But I do think almost these people are beyond redemption. The, 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 the corruption within them. And the winner is... And the winner is... The award goes to... And the winner is... The award goes to... Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Prince Freaking Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Prince Freaking Harry. Man, I'm uh, I'm in shock. That's, that's Prince Harry. Uh. What wonderful news! What wonderful news! So, Prince Harry will be honored with the SP Award uh, for his work as the founder of the Invictus Games. Um, ESPN announced on Thursday. So in Tatler Magazine, uh, they wrote, Prince Harry will be honored with an SB Awards during the annual ceremony in Los Angeles next month. The SB, or the Excellence in Sports Performance Yearly Awards, honors athletes' achievements from individuals or teams throughout the previous year. Prince Harry is not winning for his polo skills, however, um, but his Invictus Foundation charity. The Duke of Sussex will be awarded the Pat Tillman Award for service in honor of his tireless work in making a positive impact for the veterans community through the power of sports. You know what I absolutely love about Prince Harry and about Megan. Fate, destiny, the universe, God, whatever it is, colluded so that these two souls could meet. And the way they are navigated, the amount of hate, vitriol, and the amount of hostility coming from evil, dirty, disgusting mouth is that they said what they needed to say, showed receipts that they needed to show, and now they have been going forward, doing the things that they outline that they would do, Continue to elevate voices that need to be elevated. Bring attention to things that need to be brought to, to, to our attention. And they are reaping little by little, one by one, the recognition for the work. Let me make this clear. For the work. Not for having a title, for the work. And I couldn't be happier. <laughs> when I heard that announcement, I was like, I started laughing <laughs> because I was like, okay, I wonder how, hmm, I wonder, wonder, wonder how <laughs> they're reacting in certain places. <laughs> but I don't care how they're, how they're reacting to certain places. I care about this man getting the recognition for the hard work that he does. And that Megan also get the recognition and accolades that she deserves for her work. 
there are two other um two other special honorees at uh, the 2024 SPs, um, and they are Steve Gleason, a former NHL player who was diagnosed with ALS in 2011, who will receive the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage, and Don um, Stanley, the South Carolina Gamecocks woman ba basketball team head coach. Um, who will receive the Jimmy V Award for Perseverance. Isn't that beautiful? Just absolutely wonderful. Congratulations to all of them. Well, well, well deserved. Um, deserved. Patrick Daniel Tillman Jr. was an American professional football player for the Arizona Cardinals of the National Football League who left his sport career and enlisted in the United States Army in May 2002 in the aftermath of the September 11 attacks. He unfortunately passed away or died um, in Afghanistan and um, by friendly fire. He was 27 years old. The Duke of Sussex has been ordered by a high court judge to explain why messages which might be relevant to his legal case against the publisher of The Sun have been deleted. News group newspapers, which also published the now defunct News of the World, had brought a one-day hearing to help gain access to documents, emails, and messages related to Prince Harry's claim. The Prince and more than 40 others are suing the company over allegations of unlawful information gathering from journalists and private investigators it hired, with a trial expected to start in January 2025. NGN is contesting the claims. Mr. Justice Timothy Fancourt said there was evidence that a large number of potentially relevant documents and confidential messages between the Prince and the ghostwriter of his autobiography, Spare, were destroyed some time between 2021 and 2023, well after this claim was underway. The position is not transparently clear about what happened, the judge said. He said the Prince's exchanges with writer J.R. Moringer on the Signal messaging app may have related to the parts of Spare in which unlawful information gathering in relation to newspapers was discussed. NGN's legal team accused the Duke of obfuscation but Prince Harry's barrister, David Sherborne, said in written arguments that the Duke had not discussed unlawful information gathering via text or WhatsApp with anyone and that his signal messages had been wiped. Mr. Justice Fancourt ruled that a wider search was required of Prince Harry's laptop, text, and WhatsApp messages to look at exchanges from 2005 until early 2023. The Duke was also ordered to produce a witness statement explaining how messages with his ghostwriter J.R. Moringer were missing. I remember that Will Smith had said that um, Denzel Washington had said to him after that incident, he said, at your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes. <sighs> and and these things are going to continue coming right um news group was awarded two-thirds of its cost um, but the duke of sussex legal team is disputing the one hundred and thirty-two thousand pound bill arguing that the amount is excessive for a one-day hearing this is what I don't understand about the UK system. Yes, I get it. Like it, it, it sort of avoids you bring in frivolous court cases, right? And 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 just jamming up the court. So you you will think twice before you do it because if you lose, you have to pay. But it creates a, a system that is not fair at all. Because then the only people who can afford justice are very wealthy people. And I mean, we know that this argument is sort of nonsensical in, in a way, and it's, it's sort of like to just, let's, 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 let's throw this piece of spaghetti on the wall and see if it sticks, right? I mean, 
anyone writing a memoir, especially someone like Prince Harry, and you are, you are exchanging messages, editing stuff with, with your ghost writer, do you think you would leave messages around or just have them sitting there so you can be hacked? Let's, let's, let, me, let, let me remind us. Why is Harry in court again with these people? Right? Is it not for like how they report it, how they obtain their information, the illegal things that they've done, like the phone hacking stuff, allegedly, allegedly, did they not bury a whole lot of phone hacking stuff that, that, that people weren't able to see? So the argument is, if I'm watching the news, let's just say I'm watching the news, right? And in the news, it's a... Um, Compromise, there was a phone hacking of several celebrities and blah, 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 blah. And some commoners are also involved in the, um, their phones being hacked. I'm sitting there watching the news. Do you think under baby Jesus heaven that I am going to think that my phone was one of the phones that they hacked? No. But let's say, let's just say, four years later, right? Four years later, let's say someone that I worked for, that, 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 that worked for someone else who had their phone hacked, right? It comes out and, and all of a sudden they say, hey, you were working for that person at that time too. Are you... Could it be possible that your phone was hacked also? I would say, well, no. Like, what? I don't think so. And they'd be like, well, what? why do you think yours was, wasn't hacked? I mean, it could have been. So, you know, all of a sudden you're going, holy cow. Holy cow. I could have been hacked also. Now, here is where the legal kind of thing gets, like, really murky and a little bit murkier. So, which one is the truth date? When I was randomly watching the news and on the news, I heard of this thing. Didn't think it had anything to do with me, so I, I didn't pay much attention to it. Does that date count? Four years ago? Or is it from the date where... I am now finding out more context and people are saying or asking me, are you sure they didn't hack yours too? And, I, and then when you start to get more information, you go, only macaroni. Right? So these people hid information. Allegedly, allegedly, everything I say is allegedly. And it's the system, my friends, the system. I mean, over and over, we start to realize how corrupt our systems are. I don't know what the solution is. I don't. I'm just bringing it to our attention. That all of our systems are set up for the wealthy, for the very rich. There's very little justice for, for, for truly for the rest of us. I mean, I, I am happy that Prince, Prince Harry is able to, 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 to take this forward. And by the grace of God, it gets the result that needs to happen. So that other people, so it can set a precedent. So these other people who could not take the risk, they cannot take the risk because they don't have the same amount of funds would be able to then sue these son of a... Uh, well, let's do what needs to get done. Oh, as, as I was saying, why would I, if I'm writing my memoir, not erase 
clean, wash, laundry, scrub with, with Clorox and, 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 I know, Windex and every possible, take, 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 take some vinegar in, in, in a pot and boil my messages and, and make sure it evaporates into thin air. I would do every single freaking thing possible so no one could get their hands on them. I send the message to you, my ghostwriter. You got it. You put it where you need to put it. Erase that message. And I'm going to be like, here is the recipes you need to follow. Take the message, put it in a pot, put some vinegar. Then after you boil it, take some Clorox. Spray the air with the Clorox as it evaporates. Gosh, it sounds like I'm creating a witch potion or something. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. The UK media portrayal of Prince William's attendance at Taylor Swift's concert juxtaposed with Prince Harry and Meghan's experience at the Beyonce's concert appears to be another instance of biased reporting and that perpetuates a divisive narrative between the two brothers and their families. The attempt to frame William as a triple A celebrity who doesn't star chase while implying the opposite for Harry is an oversimplification and an invention, if any at all, that ignores the complexities of their roles and personal choices. The media's selective use of imagery, such as highlighting Williams dancing while choosing a serious photo of Harry, demonstrates a clear bias in storytelling. This practice can manipulate public perception and fuel unnecessary comparisons between the two brothers. The media's focus on one image of Harry looking serious, is a clear example of cherry picking to fit a predetermined narrative. This type of reporting not only feeds into existing tensions, but also perpetuates a harmful cycle of comparison and criticism. It's crucial for readers to approach such narratives critically and recognize that these are complex individuals with their own preferences and experiences rather than characters in a tabloid drama. Okay, well, my beautiful people, there is actually more that I wanted to say, but um, this happens to me all the time. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'll save and see if um, it's worth the other stuff that I wanted to say, to say it in our next uh, podcast, if not, because um, this stuff goes by so quickly, right? You, you spend a day or two on one thing and it's old already. So that's it for now. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending some time. And I hope along this, what, 30 minutes or 40 or whatever it's been, I hope somewhere along the way you either learned something or I made you laugh or smile or you, you were just like, Antonio, Antonio. <laughs> Whichever one, I'll be happy with. Um, as long as it put a little bit of uh, happiness and joy and um, some information to keep you informed, okay? Once again, thank you for being part of this community. Um, to all of our new subscribers, bienvenue, welcome, bienvenidos. And um, thank you all for your continued support, for your wonderful messages, and see you next time. Ta ta, bye bye, adios, hasta luego. Uh, what else? Akuna matata, what else? Super califragilisticexpialidocious, no? No, that's wrong? Okay. Um, all right, that's it. Ciao, ciao.